The Higher Taste features Peter Burwash, world-renowned Davis Cup tennis pro, author and lecturer, and president of Peter Burwash International, with vegetarian gourmet chef Nancy Rossi. In today's special, Vegetarian Cuisine for the Athlete. Sixteen years ago, I made an adjustment in the way I ate. I became a vegetarian. Now, I'm on the road about 300 days a year, and many years ago, that was a big problem, but today it's becoming a lot easier. Many of the hotels are putting vegetarian cuisine on their menus. The airlines have made it very easy to order special vegetarian meals. And there are vegetarian restaurants springing up in almost every city around the world. But you know, as much as the food has improved on the road, nothing beats a good home-cooked meal. Now my good friend Nancy is going to teach you and I how to prepare vegetarian food. And what are we going to look at here today, Nancy? Well, we're going to prepare a couple of different uh, preparations. Start the morning off with uh, a scrambled omelet, similar to scrambled eggs, without the eggs, of course. And then you're going to be out on the courts all day, so work up a good appetite, and you'll come home, and we'll have a lasagna Italian feast for dinner this Wonderful. evening. Wonderful. So we're starting off here with boiling the milk a simple way. You're making actually homemade cheese that is going to resemble, resemble an omelet when we finish here. And, and you say resemble, will it also taste like an omelet? Even better. That's even what be everyone says that, that tries this. They really like it much better. It seems to have a very wonderful taste. What we do is take the milk to a rapid boil. Now it's got to be a rumbling boil just about now. And then you're going to add some fresh lemon to it. It, it. Lemon is usually practical because everyone has it in the refrigerator. If not, you can use citrus acid, sour salt. You can get in any market usually. Okay. Now you just pour enough in. Maybe for this amount of milk, two tablespoons should do it. There you go. And this is not difficult for a, a bachelor to prepare? Or anyone. A, anyone can do this. Just need, <laughs> sure. just need a pot, milk, bring it to a boil. And once it boils, just pour this lemon juice in. And you can see immediately now, you turn the heat off, turn off the flame, and then it starts to separate. And this is, this is like curds and whey, in essence, what you're making. If you look here, you can see. Very much. It looks uh, almost like egg, just a little bit of uh, coloring, and right, we've got right. it. So what you do is just simply, in a colander or cheesecloth, you just strain your cheese right here, and you're going to just let it su set and strain for about 10 minutes. Pour this off. Now, this entire process of uh, preparing this, how long would it take? A lot of people are really concerned in the morning. You know, they're rushing around. They've got up late. They've got to get to work. This will set for 10 minutes. While it's setting, we are going to heat up some ghee, and we're going to fry some potatoes that are going to go inside, right inside the omelet. What is ghee exactly? You'd simply boil butter down to make ghee, and all the impurities come out of it, so it's a very pure, excellent cooking medium. It's been said that if you use ghee to cook vegetables, fruits, and so forth, that you will lose that desire. It very much satisfies the desire and the taste we have for, for eating meat. And let's face it, we all grew up on a meat diet. Yeah, that's pretty so, important because that's, uh, you know, whenever you ask someone uh, uh, why they eat meat, almost all of the reasons are because it tastes good. And exactly. when people who do study and understand the, uh, the concept of a vegetarian uh, uh, way of life, the only argument really left at the end is that, you know, meat does taste good. So if you can satisfy this, this is a wonderful substitute. As I said, when you cook with ghee, it doesn't soak up the oil. Rather, it cooks it at a very high temperature very quickly and, and leaves it a very nice flavor. Another interesting factor is that people think they can lower their cholesterol count by way of exercise. Well, that's pretty much of a myth. You could probably take it down a few percentage points, but uh, um, Nathan Pritikin's son, who is also a doctor, found that on a vegetarian diet, you can lower your cholesterol count 25% in three and a half weeks. So what this means mm -hmm. is that, let's say someone had a cholesterol count of around 210, 220, they could get into the safe zone on a vegetarian diet in three and a half weeks. And this is pretty darn important because we're losing a lot of people from our population each year because of a heart attack. They eat too much cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So you can see how beautifully this ghee cooks. Very quickly, you can get it so hot. 
Exactly, boy. And they just look really nice. And we'll just set them right over here on the side on a paper towel. Okay. Great. Okay, now the next step here, we're simply going to take this wok. Wok is very nice to cook with. You can stir fry very quickly and keep everything moving around real nice. And we'll just take a little bit of this hot ghee here, maybe two tablespoons is all. So here we're going to just heat up this ghee again until it gets hot and smokes. And we're going to be using a few different spices. That is the key to really to excellent vegetarian cooking is the spicing. And some of these spices you may not be familiar with. Um, you can pick mo actually most of these up today at the health food store. The first one we're going to use here is cumin, cumin seed. And we're just going to take about a teaspoon of cumin and brown it right in here in this ghee, real quick. It'll cook very quickly. Now, in the beginning, is a lot of this just kind of trial and error in terms of uh, the uh, proportion of the spices that you use, or is there a... No, it's, it's a, I have some excellent recipes that uh, I'll be sharing with you, but really, you just want to put about a teaspoon of cumin for a gallon of milk that you're making. And I've cut up some green peppers here, and we'll just throw these in. So we'll have a green pepper, tomato, and cheese omelet Ooh, sounds today. Great. There we go. We're just going to stir fry these up real quick until the uh, green pepper just maybe lightly browned. You still want to keep them green and crisp. I want to overcook them. Now the next thing we're going to do is just put maybe a, about a half a stick of butter in there. Two tablespoons approximately for that amount of milk. Now, is there an order here? You're, you said you're going to use the tomatoes. Uh, do the I tomatoes will go in a little bit afterwards. This butter is excellent to cook this meal curd in. And you just cook it down just a little bit. And then we're going to add some powdered spices. These spices, uh, the turmeric right here, will give the little delicate yellow flavor. And you'll see once we cook this all up how much it will look just like just like eggs. And that's important psychologically, too, that people actually, uh, because they become so conditioned from a young age to think that uh, they should be eating uh, if it some, looks something right. looks looks like just like eggs in the morning. That's right. Just yeah. maybe a, a half a teaspoon of this is all you need. Okay. Just throw that right in. And we're going to put a little ground coriander. All of these spices you can get in specialty shops, but now they are all available at the health food stores. And they uh, have so many values. Not only nutritively, they aid digestion, purify the blood. Sometime we'll have a full class and go over all the different spices and how they can really benefit. And this spice, hing, is very nice. This is a, it's actually a substitute for onions and garlic. And I know a lot of people have difficulty with digestion with onions and garlic. About a half a teaspoon of hing. That's that similar to asafoetida? Asafoetida or yeah. hing. You can get that. Some health food stores do carry that. Right. Um, Sometimes you will have to go to a specialty shop for that. Most Asian shops will carry that. And you can, the spices really make a big difference here. The next step, we'll just take these fresh tomatoes that we've cut up here. Right into the wok they go. You know, when you cook in this very simple way, you can actually savor and really actually rediscover the natural delicious taste and quality that fresh food and vegetables have. So. Uh, I know even now in restaurants, you think you're getting real eggs and you're not. You can see that this is really shaping up and looking more and more like scrambled eggs. I, when I'm uh, making this today, we're using fresh green pepper, tomato. Uh, the varieties are endless. You can make spinach. Ooh, you that can sounds spinach great. Spinach and cheese omelet. You could put broccoli. I, it's just up to your imagination what you'd like to do, but I thought green pepper and tomato would be nice. We're just going to sprinkle a very little bit of salt. One of the wonderful things about cooking with spicing and learning how to cook with spicing is you really don't need very much salt at all. And because the, the spices and the cooking very quickly and the ghee actually enhance the flavor of food. And as you know, most Americans, they just salt and pepper their food to oh, the point of, you know, very little, just a little bit of salt and pepper here. And if you could just kind of stir that a little bit, we're just going to garnish this with a You're little You're going to get me involved cheese. here, are you? Then? There you go. All right. right there. One of the things, uh, too, that uh, when I, I first switched over to becoming a vegetarian, Nancy, was I, I took a, an awful lot of ribbing. 
I bet you did. Yeah, the, uh, when I was on the professional tennis tour. In fact, I remember one time playing with uh, Marty Reeson, who was one of the uh, world's uh, best doubles players at the time in the early 70s, said that uh, if I didn't have so many carrots hanging out my ears, I'd be a... Uh, <laughs> Uh, a lot faster and in fact even speaking of uh, of uh, the, the carrot uh, story one of my uh, radio talk shows I was doing one time a lady called up and said you know my husband is a construction worker I can't send him out with a carrot in his stomach and you know there's a great misconception about vegetarian food they don't many people don't think that you can actually have a the variety and beef get filled up and, and C be quite strong and and that was also very helpful for me too and I be switched over to being a vegetarian one year after doing that I uh, ended up with the highest fitness index of any athlete in Canada my left hand strength increased 38 percent and that was a great uh, booster for me because you know the first year everybody told me you know I was going to to, to die my, my father thought I'd flipped out as most parents do and uh, when their children make a, make an adjustment and, and what really amazed me was the fact that most people were really very ignorant of what food did for you you know they just felt that if you didn't eat meat and fish and poultry you were a, you were a goner now i put these fried potatoes in here just very quickly stirring them around and i've grated some fresh cheese this is rennetless cheese uh, you can get what, it in any health rennet? food store rennet comes from animals it comes from the uh, stomach linings of animals and actually most health food stores well all health food stores certainly even supermarkets today now carry cheese that you can get without rennet in it. And well, it'll actually say rennetless cheese? It says rennetless cheese right on the package. Okay. So you know that it's pure. Just sprinkle a little bit on here. Turn your fire down. Put the top on this and our meal is ready. As soon as that cheese melts, we can serve out and have a delicious breakfast here. Now, Peter, let's open this up and take a look and see how this looks. Mm, wonderful. See, the cheese just melts naturally, right? Just mm -hmm. cover it up from the heat. And you know, you can serve out a, a, a nice breakfast or a brunch to friends and it doesn't look like something foreign like they've never seen before. You know, people think vegetarian, oh, what, what are they going to eat? Here's a very attractive looking preparation that they, looks very familiar. Really does, looks just like scrambled eggs. You can serve this up with any number of things, but we suggest here a fresh, uh, homemade bran, raisin bran muffin. It just really complements nicely with your meal as the roughage you need and you have a well-balanced, healthful, nutritious day, way to start your day. That's great. Now we're going to show you some dinner recipes. We have minestrone soup, spinach lasagna, we have a fresh salad, green beans, and Peter, I hope you've worked up a good appetite. I'm ready for all this. Sure have, Nancy. Okay. What we started first here, and you can see we've already prepared, is a, just a fresh uh, Italian salad. Uh, you can create anything your imagination desires with a salad. We've used romaine lettuce, fresh tomatoes, olives, avocado, carrots, and so forth, but it's just unlimited. There are so many different varieties of lettuce besides iceberg lettuce, which I think is the lowest on the scale of nutritive value when you talk about lettuce. Right. Very simply, we're going to make a nice minestrone soup. You just put about a tablespoon or so of olive oil in the bottom of the pan. And just pour a little olive oil in here, simple enough. Heat that up just a little bit. And I mentioned to you a spice earlier called hing or asafoetida, which is likened to onions and garlic easier to digest right. just a little bit we want to put in here maybe a, a quarter of a teaspoon in there there we go now let this just saute lightly this is cabbage we'll add a little bit of time to the soup next we throw in some diced up tomatoes stir fry that a little more then I added a few garbanzo beans, Okay. maybe a half a cup soaked garbanzo beans. Turn this heat up now, just a little bit more. Did they come as they are, or did you have to pre-cook? You can, you can buy garbanzo beans so that they're already pre-cooked. Uh, I soaked these. You can bring them to a boil and then just let them soak for eight hours, and they're fine. And then you just put them in here with a little bit of, this is freshly cut parsley, 
And simple enough, we just have to add approximately five cups of water. We'll put the lid on and just let it cook down a little bit, and then we'll add some more vegetables as we move along. But this will just get us going a little bit. Uh, as you're preparing this, are there any, is there set order for vegetables to go in, or? Well, there, there is. You want to put your beans in, as I've done here first, especially if, they, if they're not fully cooked, because they'll take longer right. to cook. So you kind of want to get those on right away. And in a sequence here, we'll be adding some carrots, celery, zucchini, potatoes. And then is a, a little bit of a garnish with some Parmesan cheese, and you're really, you're all set. Great. We'll put a little barley in there as well, towards the end. So, okay, now while this soup is simmering along, before we add the other ingredients, what we want to do is get our sauce on, because to make a really good tomato sauce, you want it to set and, and uh, cook down a little bit, so all the spices cook in that sauce and really add some nice flavor. Now, we need to add, again, just a little bit of olive oil, maybe two tablespoons in the bottom of the pan. When I was growing up and uh, had a chance to possibly play professional hockey just at one level below, we were trained on a, a big steak dinner. In fact, many athletes up until just recently were trained on that. And now we're uh, seeing many of the training tables switching to the carbohydrate type dinner, so the lasagnas. In fact, Italian food is, is becoming very, very popular. We're blending up, just very quickly pureeing some Italian tomatoes with a little basil in there. We're just starting to become very much aware and sensitive to the proper balance of foods that should go in. For example, in 1965, most of the charts said you should have 50% of your food intake should be protein. And then the mm -hmm. charts in 1975 somehow or other switched to 30%. And today, 1985-86 era, they're talking about 10% of your food intake. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we're going to affect the World Health Organization even says 5%. And what the athletes are now uh, eating more and more of are carbohydrates. And this, what this does is it's your long-term breakdown into glycogen, which is your muscle sugar. And that's why you'll see a lot of um, uh, the triathletes and the marathon runners. They will have lots of pasta before their mm -hmm. event, uh, lots of spaghetti and the, the noodles and the rice and the potatoes and things like that. So uh, the, the Italian uh, restaurants, the Italian food markets are very excited about this new trend in food because it fits in uh, uh, very nicely. And in fact, something like the vegetarian lasagna is, is becoming a very popular meal for athletes. Let's just tell you what's going on with this sauce just a little bit. We just put the olive oil on the bottom of the pan and a little of that asafoetida, and then put some of these Italian tomatoes in here. And now we just want to add a little bit of water and spice it up with some herbs, Italian herbs, oregano, basil, um, a little salt and pepper. You want to add, oh, approximately two cups of water here to this. And then the sauce will cook down slowly 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and, and it really all the herbs come, uh, flavor comes out and it'll make it a really wonderful taste. So I'm putting just a little bit of salt and pepper here and put about a tablespoon of oregano. No, maybe a teaspoon of oregano for this amount of sauce. We're making just a smaller batch here. While all this is happening, we're going to just boil the noodles as well. And this will all orchestrate and come together in a very nice fashion. But um, we're going to boil some whole wheat noodles. There are many different noodles you can buy today for, to make lasagna. Uh, these are just whole wheat noodles that you can pick up at the health food store. And uh, they're 100% whole wheat noodles. They have spinach noodles now and so artich flour. artichoke, artichoke noodles. Artichoke. Yeah. yeah, much big, great variety. So there's a lot of different things you can do. We're going to make a whole wheat spinach lasagna tonight. So once this water uh, boils and we put these see it might be ready here yes great now again you just want to put a little bit of oil because uh, noodles tend to stick together so if you just put a touch of oil in there and a little little bit of salt in the water as well not too much you don't really need very much at all maybe half a teaspoon salt in there and when you uh, in cooking lasagna you don't want it you just want to slide the noodles in real kind of one at a time in a full boil or else they will stick together. So 
I know that's a problem sometimes when people cook. Just slide them in gently. There you go, simple, full boil. Are you trying now feet. just to get them uh, soft? Is that the goal of Yeah, the they're not, uh, in Italian it's al diente. You don't want to really cook them to death. Yeah, just a little, little bit. bit. Right, because you're going to bake them in the oven, so you don't want them to be, you know, like mush. Now we want to just check back on this soup just a little bit here. It's looking good. Then you just add your carrots and your celery. You're going to let that cook another maybe 10 minutes. And then the vegetables that cook very quickly here, potatoes, zucchini, let's put in a Potato little... Potato cooks quickly, does it? Yeah. Ten, when it's diced like this, you see, right. they cook very quickly. Because baked potatoes always seem to take such a they long take, time. They that's, will that's take That's interesting, because, you know, if I was working this, I would have put the potatoes in first. It was almost like the reverse order. So this is quite yeah. an education. Just, uh, they'll cook very quickly, diced like this. Now here, we have a little barley. And let's, we'll go ahead and put this barley in now, because that takes a little bit longer. All right, this, see this sauce is looking really nice. It's starting to thicken up a little bit. You want to put a little bit of, uh, I've got some raw sugar, and you always want to put a little bit of sugar in a, in a tomato. Maybe a teaspoon is all, is all you need. Just a little bit. What does that do? Well, tomatoes tend to be a little bit acidic. Acidic, right. And the, okay. a little bit just balances off enough, so you don't want a sweet sauce, but... you got to have a, quite a few hands in the kitchen, <laughs> right? People don't appreciate this sometimes. All The meal just appears on the plate and... They don't realize. See, now look. There we go. You want to maybe rinse a little bit of it with a little cool water for this any excess uh, starch we don't need in the diet. Okay. And just drain these lightly. Okay, so here come the potatoes. Those are the ones I would have put in first. All right. And we'll put a little zucchini in here as well. You can put it about right in with the potatoes now. There we go. Great. Peter, we just put a touch of uh, olive oil on the bottom of this pan just so that the noodles don't stick when we're going to bake this in the oven. And then we're just going to layer these noodles and this stuffing on spinach. What are we doing here now, by the way? Well, we're just we'll going to spice up. This is the regatta cheese filling that will go in the, uh, between the, the noodles. And we just, it basically we have regatta cheese. Okay. And um, some fresh ground Parmesan cheese and different, a little bit different spices. Not too much actually is needed here. Little herbs, little uh, oregano, salt, and pepper. And you, you want to just kind of knead it, stir it, until you get a nice creamy consistency here. And then we are just going to layer your noodles down the bottom of your casserole here. You put a little sauce on the bottom of the pan there. We simply kind of spoon this on. This is when you get gets fun. You can kind of you like use this, your little huh? fingers. Gets a back to bit. when you were playing in the playpen, That's right? right. <laughs> Out in the Play sand. Dough. Yeah. So we're putting on spinach now. That's just it's fresh spinach. You um, don't just throw it on there. I notice you're no, separating kinda, it. Uh, I like in to thin layers. Right. I, I, rather than chopping it up, this is fresh spinach that's just been lightly steamed. Um, you, you don't, you wash, of course, spinach very thoroughly, and you just need to steam it in a tiny bit of water or a tablespoon. And it, it's just very nice when it's, it's just lay, layered down like this. And then we sprinkle a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese on top of here. Here we have a little bit of fresh mozzarella cheese. And we just want to kind of layer a little bit on here. You know, you've got the two uh, low-fat cheeses here, ricotta cheese and uh, mozzarella cheese. That's right, so they're high protein, but you're watching the fat intake as well. down to the finishing touches here. We just ladle on a little bit more of this sauce on the top. There we go. Great. It smells good as well as uh, looks good. And let's sprinkle on a little bit Parmesan. Finishing touch here. 
Now, is this your con little extra addition, this Parmesan, or is this... Uh, no, that's... Uh, the, that, the, the, that's the Italians brought it over, didn't that's they? That's right. Okay. It's, a very, it's a very subtle taste, but it really enhances the lasagna. You need to have Parmesan. Although, you know, it, more people now... I'm just using mozz mozzarella cheese here, um, but I know many people are using varieties of different Monterey Jack and different cheddars and being, again, a little bit more creative and... And so, you know, you can really try and experiment with different, uh, different blends of cheeses, different types of noodles and so forth, adding different vegetables. So we're just sliding this in the oven. The oven's on 350 and really about 30 minutes and this will be ready. The, the, the cheese will be bubbly and a little bit brown, not too much on the top, and it'll be all set. We just have a few finishing touches here to finish off our meal. You put about two tablespoons of olive oil in a fry pan, and now you have these steamed vegetables here, steamed green beans. And when it's really smoking, <laughs> stick them in real quick. And we're going to stir fry them very quickly. And there's really not a lot of spicing required in this. The the uh, hot olive oil really adds a nice flavor, just a very, very little bit of salt and a sprinkle of pepper, touch of hing, and you're all set. Nice There we go, these are ready. This is ready. And our soup, as you can see, it's nice and thick and ready. All we do is just add about two tablespoons of Parmesan, grated Parmesan cheese in there. Give that a little stir. And we'll serve this piping hot. There we go. This practically in itself is a meal. You've got your garbanzo beans, fresh vegetables, and barley. Really, it is with a meal within itself. There we go. You can serve that with a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese as a garnish. And the final touch. A little fresh parsley. And you have a complete healthful vegetarian meal. I want all of you to know about three wonderful books that Peter has authored. Uh, the first one, Vegetarian Primer. Really, it covers all the aspects of vegetarianism he's, he's discussed tonight, and there are even a few really nice recipes in the back of the book. Uh, he actually knows a little bit more about cooking than he's let on during this, this show. The next book, Aerobic Workout Book for Men, is available as well. And I believe, was this your first book, Peter, Tennis for Life? That's right. That started it all off, yeah. That started it all off, Tennis for Life. And there's a little section on vegetarianism covered in the book as well. And uh, Peter, I know you have to run off, but you might tell our viewers where they could get these books and where they'd be available for them. Well, Nancy, there's still a few available in the, the bookstore, but uh, the best place to order them would be through our world headquarters, Peter Burwash International, 2203 Timberlock Place, Suite 126, The Woodlands, Texas, 77380. Nancy, it's been uh, great uh, being here with you. I, I learned a lot, and uh, it was a special opportunity to uh, share with our viewers uh, a very uh, exciting uh, future that uh, vegetarianism does have. Great. Have a safe flight. Yeah. We'll see you next we'll time. Do. Thank you.